you have the, with you this morning, um, I introduced him in the beginning, Mark Futterwhite is with us, and he is a male breast cancer survivor, two-time survivor. The disease can manifest itself in a number of different ways. It was first diagnosed to be a staph infection. They put me in antibiotics. But in the end, it turned out that it was a clogged mammary duct, which then turned out to be uh, what's called a carcinoma in C2. Then we uh, had, surger had surgery in January of 2008. They removed it, closed me up, and that was the end of it. Unfortunately, in 2016, I felt a little uh, irregularity, I should, if you want to say, in the uh, area where the surgery was, where my left nipple used to be, and uh, came back again. And uh, now at that point in time, I was uh, what's called HER2 positive, so I had to undergo 12 weeks of chemotherapy and then seven weeks of radiation. Thank goodness today everything is well and uh, we're getting out there now talking about this. Right, and now when this all came about, obviously you connected with Dr. Stoff at some point. Um, you've gone out, you've been an advocate, um, part of the Male Breast Cancer Coalition. How did you guys connect? There was a, a news report released of uh, a number of uh, fi male firefighters that came down with breast cancer as a, as a result of the 9-11 uh, ex exposure to all the toxins. But nowadays, most cancers are environmentally induced. So when this report came out about all the firefighters with the male breast cancer, um, awareness for a cure reached out and we, we, we reported in our newsletter. But as it turned out, so was Mark's organization, the uh, Male Breast Cancer Coalition. And we met because we had a common interest and a common goal of getting information out to other men about what the risk might be and, the, and that they should be aware of this possibility. When I was diagnosed, there, w there were no outlets. There was nothing out there. My wife and I searched groups. There was nothing for men. Men right. were basically in the shadows. Uh, and unfortunately, it's, at that time, it was looked at as a female disease. A lot of men did not come forward. A lot of men were embarrassed. A lot of men were ridiculed, not only at work, by, by their family members as well, which is really sad. Uh, through Susan G. Komen, uh, who I got involved with early on because we were looking for an outlet, uh, I met a woman by the name of Sherry Ambrose. Sherry Ambrose was part of another group called the Blue Wave. Um, she got involved in it because she had a friend of hers, a, a gentleman, who was diagnosed with breast cancer. He was ridiculed at work. He basically had to leave work because uh, he couldn't take it anymore. We were at an event. He was there by himself because his wife was embarrassed. Right? It's just, it's amazing. I mean, I know that, you know, um, I hate to use the term, but like the male, male breast cancer doesn't get the play, so to speak, that, that female breast cancer does. But I can't imagine ridiculing someone or can't imagine, you know, I mean, to me, I, it seems like cancer is cancer. Um, and I'm not saying that in a dismissive way, but like, I mean, to, to ridicule or to mock anybody that, you know, is diagnosed with cancer to me, it seems... Um, that's actually, not comprehend, you know, yeah, not comprehensible. It's not but. uncommon, though. I mean, I, I always, I often see it in my practice that if someone has cancer of some sort, that other family members will shun them and 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 try to sideline them and just not to face it and deal with it. And you know, I, I can see, have, I can see not wanting to face it possibly, or not wanting to deal with it, and you know, having trouble dealing with the disease or dealing with death, but like to actually like ridicule some of that. Well, when like. people are uncomfortable about something or a subject that might even affect them at some point, then one a natural human reaction for some people is unfortunately to do that. Right, you know, it's interesting. I mean, like I know we heard about the stories about people with AIDS in the 80s, you exactly. know, and how people were scared, oh my God, if I touch the drink out of the same cup or what. But I can understand that a little more only because we didn't know a whole lot about the disease, but cancer has been around for a long, it just seems. Well, yeah, but the information hasn't been around for that right, long. Right, right. And, that, and that's why we're here.